It doesn't require a supply line of parts from China or Brazil. It just uses carbon from the air, sunlight, water, and, and off you go. So this is the basic idea of nanotech, that we don't take a lump of metal like a piece of rock and then chip off whatever it is that we don't want and are left with a tool. No, we take individual atoms like little blocks of Lego and we pile them up into piles and they become whatever it is that we desire, be it new housing, an airplane, or a computer, or anything and everything. So nature is showing us that it's possible because everything around you in nature is built that way, molecule by molecule, atom by atom. So in theory, it's possible. And now, of course, we need to do it in practice, which is always a bit harder. So these are some of the sort of synthetic molecules you could make with interesting applications. These are molecules we actually already can make, carbon nanotubes. It is one of the strongest material known to man. And you can actually make these tubes as long as you want and then bind them together in little cords and then weave cloth out of that cord and it becomes very, very strong. Um, there's an Israeli company that makes bulletproof vests out of that. It is seriously strong bulletproof vest. You can also tie them together and then you get a really big strong cable and that could have interesting applications such as, of course, the much desired space hook, which is a cable from the equator 36,000 kilometers up into the sky to a geostationary orbit, which is a fixed place above the Earth while the Earth is rotating. And then you could have a cable strong enough to hold its own weight plus, of course, all the useful stuff. And then instead of going, going into space with rockets and flames and explosions, you can just go up on an electric elevator, which will be a lot safer and cheaper. Now, this has been dreamed about since the 40s, but with carbon nanotubes, we actually, in theory, have the material to do it. Uh, normal steel or anything like that is not strong enough. Now, of course, another thing you can do with nanotechnology is grow solar cells. There's sort of a you know, big patch in North Africa that is available for that, I hear, and that could you know, power most of the planet, actually. Um, so that's a, a, nice, a nice solution. The other way is to make things very, very small. These are cogwheels at the molecular scale. We can make these in the lab. And this is a more complex thing. We can't yet make this, but this, these are chemically stable designs that have been uh, calculated. So now we can take the idea of the 3D printer, but now it will work at the atomic level. So atomic precision, which means you just have you know, feedstock of stuff going into it, carbon and some other materials and information and it builds anything you like, including of course copies of itself. Now many of you can do the maths on that. Say you have one of these and it takes 24 hours to replicate. How long do you need to get one to every European? The answer is 30 days. 30 days is about what it takes to get you know, the EU together on a meeting on something. So by the time governments get the, whole, the hang of this, that this is going on, they'll be irrelevant. This is another solution, medical devices, very, very small, so that you can go places where normal surgery can. Um, this is today, this is a prototype, but of course what we want is a robot small enough to fit sort of in a little blood um, vessel like this with the complexity of, say, a nuclear submarine so it can detect viruses, bacteria, do you know, genetic repairs on cells that would otherwise grow into tumors, stuff like that. Now, that sounds all very weird, but actually, most of those things are already done by nature, just not always super effective, so this is why our bodies tend to age and then die, and, you know, it's all very messy. So with nanotechnology and then with some of the other stuff I've been talking about in support, we could make serious sort of human body 2.0, um, if human bodies by then, of course, are still relevant, because maybe the robots have taken over. Um, so... It'll be a bit of a sort of a race between our brains getting better and our tools getting better. And it's not very clear who's going to win. If there's any winner, we might end up in some terrible scenario. I think it will be very, very interesting. The speed at which this is going to happen will be like nothing we've seen to date. So everybody who has you know, a difficult time right now keeping up with technology, I'm sorry to say you're in for a tough sort of you know, second century. So tomorrow is going to be seriously complex and for everybody who loves technology, seriously fun. Um, we are sort of now on the upswing of the thing. We spend a couple of million years slowly crawling out of the mud. We spend a couple of thousand years getting basic technology right, two centuries getting industrial technology right, and now not even a century information technology. And I think within 30 years, pretty much of the most things that we're worried about now, certainly the debate we had here this afternoon, will be utterly irrelevant. Um, there will be both machines and a next generation of beings 
uh, humans or maybe something else will be significantly smarter than us the way we are significantly smarter than an ant. And so what they'll be doing and what their motivations will be will be very hard to even think about. So um, as technologists, we need to, you know, take some distance from that. And, okay, you know, sure, the Pirate Bay might go down and, you know, we might have to go without certain forms of entertainment for six or seven days, which would be very bad. Um, but seriously, that is not our big problem. And even some of the bad things governments are doing in the slightly longer run, it's not our biggest problem. What our tools might be doing with us and to us, that is um, the big challenge. So I think we have very little time left, but um, I will welcome you to uh, feedback uh, on me, I think, in the bar, because we're pretty much out of time, I think. So thank you for your attention, and I hope to talk to you later. Time for questions? Time for questions? Or are we out of time? No, no, no. You, uh, you, you sort of had 10 minutes, so we have okay. even more time for Q&A. Does anybody have a question, a comment, a remark, a statement? You really need to wave because, yes, because I can't see a thing. I can see any of you, so speak slowly and clearly. Um, it's a shame you weren't at um, uh, at the uh, when nerds dream big uh, uh, speech because he said he, he said pretty much the exact opposite of what you're uh, saying. Can uh, you hear I'm, me? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't, no, I can't hear you. Slowly. <laughs> it's a, it's a shame you 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 weren't at the uh, when nerds dream big uh, speech because he because that speaker said pretty much the exact opposite of what you're saying. Uh, that most of the predictions that have been made in the past, including the Finch, uh, the, 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 the Vernon Finch singularity that you just um, mm -hmm. um, referred to, uh, will probably turn out very differently from the way uh, they have been predicted, oh. if at all. And, and, and you know what? They, they, they may be right. We might do something stupid. Maybe it'll be much difficult, much more difficult than we think. But if you look at all the technological trends of I don't know, the last couple of thousand years, I think they're all pretty much pointing in one direction. Now, I'm, I'm, I can't give a date exactly, or even yeah, what specific area of technology will trigger it, but the fundamental thing is that the most important thing about us and the way we got to the top of the planet is by intelligence. And so anything that improves that improves everything else. That's my basic, my basic point. And so many of the technology that, have been working, that we've been working on, especially things like IT, but also other related things, can be used to increase that which has, you know, pushed us furthest away from sort of all the other beings on this world. So that's why I think, you know, there's a pretty good chance of something like this happening, even though I don't know exactly how or exactly when. Well, the, there's one more thing that I want to add. To, wants to add. Um, I think, I think in the end, uh, humans will always be humans, and you you expected that there will be an intelligence, or that there, there will be humans that will be. Uh, as much more intelligent as us as we are compared to ants and I'm wondering if that wouldn't mean that an intelligence that's that much more intelligent than we are will be, will be as irrelevant to us as we are, are to ants I'm, I'm sorry I, I, can, I, can, I, can't, I, I can't hear you I'm sorry um. if we are getting smarter the way that you 